Yo, it's B-Ball Jones back again with the Mental Moment episode. Um, I'm fresh off of watching Netflix documentary on the Malice in the Palace. Um, and I, I just, it's kind of like a, a, a perspective view of what I got from watching the documentary. And, um, you know, outside of basketball, it's two main things that I just kind of stuck with me out of that. Uh, outside of the fact that, you know, one, I didn't know how great the Pacers were back in the day. I knew they made it to the finals and everything, and they had a you know potential team of winning the championship, but I didn't know how good they actually were. And uh, number two, I forgot how good Jermaine O'Neal was and how great uh, Metal World Peace slash Run Our Test was. And you know, I just want to throw that out there first, but that just kind of stood out to me as the main two things basketball-wise. But this is really more of uh, outside of basketball perspective of this. Um, these two things that I'm about to speak on really piss me off and really bothers me. And um, just kind of venting on it a little bit here. So first off, um, I don't want to speak on a man while he's uh, not alive like this. You know, rest in peace, David Stern. But his reaction to the whole thing really bothered me. That's number one. Uh, with him being the commissioner of the league, and him taking the stance of caring more about the fans and protecting the league's name rather than the players who make up the league really bothered me. That's how I felt coming off from my perspective. It felt like he was feeding into the noise of the media and everything that he had to send a message and he had to protect the fans more than the players when the players were actually the victim in a situation. So um, him suspending were not tests for – basically a full season, suspending J.O. for, I think, 30 games and Stack for 25 games. That really bothered me some because it felt like he was feeding to the media and that whole noise rather than him being a individual looking at it from the perspective of the fans antagonizing the players. Because, once again, if the fans don't intervene, anything going on to the court, you don't have the reaction that you have out of the players. So there's no need for me to go up into the stands for, for, if the fans don't throw anything onto the court. If they don't involve themselves in players' problems, then the, pro the players won't have a problem with the fans. That's just how it goes. And then my issue number two is really with the media attention and the, um, the view that they're feeding the masses of those players being thugs. And... I'm I've, I'm very intentional about saying we when I say this because I could that could easily be me, you know. If I was in a situation and somebody throws a ball at me, I could have very easily reacted the same way any of those three did, very easily. Because you you're when you're in that locker room, you're you're with family right there. So if somebody attacks your family, you're gonna react totally different than how you would if somebody attacks somebody you don't know. Somebody attacks you and you already been revved up like that is. It's a different mindset you have. So I really want to tackle this mindset thing of how breaking down the layers of how the perspective of how Ron Artest or Metal World Peace, Jermaine O'Neal and Stephen Jackson reacted. So number one, let's put it in context. That's an NBA game where you're already going to be revved up. You have 20,000 fans running and screaming and it's just the, it's an NBA game that's very intense. To add another level of intensity on that, it's a rivalry game where we don't like each other. You don't like me. I don't like you. Well, basketball-wise, we have an issue. And I'm putting a statement down that we are going to defend this crown that is ours. And you're putting a statement down that that crown isn't yours, that we're coming for it. Right? So that's another level of intensity. And on top of that, we're blowing, we're getting blown out or you're blowing them out. So it's even more anxiety and, like, more anxiousness to it because... I'm bothered by being blown out right now. I'm the reigning champ, and I'm bothered by getting blown out right now. You're rubbing it in my face at this point. And to add another level of to it, that hard foul by uh, running our test at the time really wasn't needed. You know what I mean? I blame Jamal Tinsley for that, but it's a whole other a situation to talk about. So that foul really wasn't needed at that point. They were up 15, so it's kind of pushes things a little bit on edge. On top of that, Ben Wallace, like they said, he – um. Lost his brother at the time, so he was kind of emotionally probably a little more revved up than everybody in that moment. And so you're adding a little bit more gas to that fire for Ben Wallace to react in a certain way because he's already getting blown out. 
he's frustrated about that. On top of that, he's a little bit more emotional about the fact that he lost his brother. So you add those two things on top of him getting pushed like that, he set off a little bit. And to go back to the perspective of the Pacers players, you have to see it how now we have a situation on the court. So we already kind of revved up. Like like they were saying, nine times out of ten, nobody's trying to fight like that. We're all really, we're all really cool on the court and off the court. You know, we're not trying to fight on the court because we're cool off the court. I'm never trying to fight you for real, for real. It's just kind of like that manhood of defending my territory. You don't want to be a punk and back down here because of all times to back down, this is not the situation too. And so that situation was revved up a little bit more because we're we're having a quote unquote scuffle. This is not really anything serious. We're just bumping. There's no nine times out of ten that dies down after about two minutes. And so for the fans who want to take part of that through that whole situation to a whole nother stratosphere of mindset now. So now everybody's already on fight or flight mode. They're already in sympathetic mode. They're already on edge. And that situation is going to die down pretty soon just by the looks of things. If I've been while so the slow starting to calm down now, Rontes was chilling on the sideline. Other players were kind of just like, playing peacekeeper, pushing a little bit. Nothing was really going to happen. By that fan throwing something to the court on run our test, that lit the fire for things to go crazy. So now you just threw a whole nother level of premium oil and gasoline onto a fire that was slowly already starting to die down. So I'm already on edge now going into this fans and going up into the stands where the fans are because I've already been edged because this is a very big game, a rivalry game, and we just had an on-court scuffle situation where 9 out of 10, we're not going to fight, but I have it in the back of my mind that something could happen. You know, so that really bothered me, that the fans felt like they should jump in on that. And so you expect NBA players to not react a certain way? Like, if, I, if I'm them, I'm at the exact same way. You can't just throw something at me in that rev up situation and not respect the reaction. And so for me... To be labeled for us to be labeled as thugs for that is very ignorant because that that could easily been me and i'm very far from a thug i'm from birmingham alabama i've lived in the suburbs and country pretty much my whole life i'm very far from a thug but i would have had that same reaction if i was in that situation i'm already revved up i'm on fight or flight mode and you throw something at me oh no you just you just not can just let that go very easily and so that bothers me that they're just being labeled as thugs when strictly because of the color of their skin, basically. That could have very easily been me, and I could have had that reaction. So I'm labeled a thug now, even though I've never been close to anything of a gangster or a thug in my whole life. That that bothers me. That pisses me off. And so just want to put some perspective and context behind that whole situation because for them to be labeled as thugs because they're black, and they they grew up a little bit more rough than I did, means nothing for them to actually be a thug. Because we have the same color of skin, we're going to be judged the same way of thug or not thug because of these actions that really are a reaction to something that should have never happened. And so just giving a perspective behind the actions and the reactions that the players took, because that really bothered me for a stern kind of not care about the players enough in that situation and for the media to really gas it up to make it seem like they're just thugs and they're just this outlandish, reckless, uh, crybaby millionaires that are wild. That's very far from the truth. You know what I mean? It's like they're not respecting the whole the whole situation of the the ramifications of what's going on. So if they already had a situation going on at their house, the media people had a situation in the office where they're 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 about to fight, right? And somebody from the outside who's not part of that company kind of jumps in and throw a water bottle at them. Of course they're gonna be real to be wanting to fight. But they don't want to take that perspective. They want to take the perspective of some black people out here making a lot more money than me are here to be ignorant and be thugs and just be goons and like no that's that's bothersome because that could, that could easily be me and i'm very far from a thug so i just feel like that was a very ignorant take from all of them you know and that language hasn't isn't brand new that language has been going since the 80s and 90s 
and still going on currently. I think LeBron James was caught a thug not too long ago. So for that mindset to really still be in place bothers me some. And that just reminded me of how far we haven't come yet. And so um, I ain't trying to make this a, a political thing or a racial thing. It's just giving perspective behind the whole situation of like, I, I'm not saying I condone the language. I mean, not, not the language, but the actions. But I, I completely understand. I'm not against it at all. Um, I've, I'm... I, if I was them, I'd be like, yo, go ahead and fight, bro. Because like, at that point, my conscience of being an NBA player is irrelevant at that point. It doesn't matter what status I have because man to man, you don't throw, sit here and throw a water ball at me or a beer ball at me, period. Especially when I don't know you, you don't know me, and this has nothing to do with you. But since you want to get yourself involved in the situation, this situation can come to you now. That's just the reaction that I have. I'm not condoning the actions at all. I'm not saying that that's the right thing to do. I just feel like that for me to be labeled a thug after that and for David Stern to push that harsh of a penalty doesn't sit right with me. And so I'm not saying it should have fought, but it's very understandable. I get it completely. And so um, this is kind of my little rant or vent or just mental moment. I don't know what this episode is really called, but or a movie review. I don't know what it is, but that's just my piece on this episode, not the episode, but more of this documentary and just just releasing my thoughts behind it. So uh, that's it for this, man. Just want to give a little perspective behind that and just like put some context behind everything that kind of went on during that time frame and why they would react like that. People expect them to be perfect citizens and model citizens when you're not putting in the whole context of everything that's going on. Because, like Ron Tess said, that's a safe haven for him. For you to come onto the floor and, it, and, and to interject your wants into this arena that you have no space in, now you have to deal with the repercussions of this. Now you have to deal with the with the uh, ramifications of these actions that you want to take. So, I get it, man. Like, I'm with Stack, I'm with J.O., I'm with Ron, or Metta World Peace. You know, I feel it. And none of them are thugs. None of them are goons or whatever. I completely get the action. So that's it, man. Uh, it's B, Coach B, B-Ball Jones, Brian signing out of this episode of the B-Ball Jones podcast with my boy Nelson Haskin. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure that you tune in for next week for another dope episode from us. Um, make sure you go back and listen to all the old episodes, man. It's a lot of great content coming out, and it's only the beginning. So thank you for listening. Subscribe to, our, uh, to the YouTube page. So follow the podcast on all social media platforms. Follow us on social media. Uh, Nelson has Facebook and Twitter. I have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And make sure you follow us along. And thank you. Join in for the ride. That's it.